Hi, Paul here from Ferdo Genius. I hope you're well, I hope you're staying safe, and I hope you're staying indoors. This is week two of the Photo Genius Self-Isolation Photography Challenge. Now you, probably like myself, are locked down safely at home, avoiding the coronavirus. But that doesn't stop us from taking amazing, fun photos. Over the weekend, I've been playing around with a technique called painting with light, or some people refer to this as light trails. This is a really cool, fun technique, and this is the theme for this week's photo challenge. Here's a couple of examples of what I've been doing over the weekend, and in this video, I wanna show you how to do it so you can enter the challenge. I'm gonna show you the camera settings, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Now I do want to start by saying a massive thank you to everybody that got involved in last week's photography challenge. The theme was food and drink and we had loads of images posted to Instagram and also to our Facebook group. You guys are awesome. I really enjoyed looking at your photos and I did try and comment on every single one and where possible give you tips and also answer some of your questions. And that's the, the whole reason why I'm doing this photography challenge. It's giving you guys who are stuck at home something to do, something to practice, something to work on but it's about learning how to take better photos that's why we're doing this so again a big thank you so this week's photo challenge is all about painting with light this is going to be an opportunity to experiment and play around with long exposures this is all about the shutter speed and you're going to learn how you can use it creatively and of course if you want to enter any of your images into the challenge all you've got to do is post them to insta or our facebook group and this week's hashtag is pg week two, that's PG for photogenius, and of course week two, because it's week two of the challenge. I'd love to see your photos. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Now the reason I've chosen painting with light as a theme for week two is because this is a great way of learning about the shutter and how you can use it creatively. It will affect the outcome of your picture. Now in this challenge, we're gonna be using what are called slow shutter speeds, and this is where the shutter is open for a significant amount of time. Another more commonly used term is a long exposure. So what is painting with light? Well, it's pretty simple in principle. Your shutter is gonna open, it's gonna remain open for a few seconds, and during that time, you will bring a light source in and you will move it around. It could be as simple as the Torch app on your phone. What you do with that light source is up to you, and this does mean that there's gonna be some randomness to this. So you could just do circles, you could do straight lines, you could write letters, whatever you like. There is no rules here for this challenge. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And don't forget, if you do share your images, make sure you use the hashtag so I can see your images. PG week two is this week's hashtag. That's PG for photogenius. And of course, week two, because it's week two of the challenge. Now to get the most from this challenge, you're gonna need a camera with manual functions. So a DSLR camera, a mirrorless camera, or a bridge camera would be ideal. Next, ideally you're gonna need a tripod to rest the camera on, but don't worry if you haven't got a tripod, because anything that would keep the camera steady will do. A table, a bench, a stack of books will be just fine. You're also going to need a light source. Now you can use your phone, you can take the uh, light off the front of your bike, or you can raid the Christmas box, which is exactly what I did. Any light source will do. In this video, I'm going to be concentrating on Nikon and Canon cameras, and I'm going to be sharing the camera settings with you as well. Now for this challenge, the camera mode we're gonna be using today is shutter priority. Now this is a great mode. If you've got a Nikon camera, it's S on the dial. If you've got a Canon like this one here, it's TV. It's still shutter priority, but Canon also use the term TV or time value. Now this means in this mode, we have priority control over the shutter speed, but we don't have to worry about the aperture because the camera will look after this for us. So this is a really good creative mode. Now there are three ways of controlling light on our cameras. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is locking the ISO at a lower setting, in fact, the lowest possible. And this is typical if you're doing astrophotography or taking photos of waterfalls and you want nice blur. Once we've done that, we'll be choosing our shutter speed. And then of course, the camera will be looking after the aperture for us. Okay, no time to waste, let's get into it. And we're gonna start with a Nikon camera first. Now, as you can see, the setup is pretty basic, but you don't need a lot to take part in this challenge. 
Right, so to begin, I'm using the Nikon D3500. I turn on the live view just to check my composition. Uh, the first picture is gonna be of Eeyore. It's one of my daughter's favorite things. Um, once I'm happy with my composition, I turn live view off mainly to save battery. Now we are in the shutter priority mode. So if you're not seeing an S in the corner, just turn the dial on the top of the camera to change and select from the different modes. Now shutter priority mode is awesome because what we can do is we can change the shutter speed and the camera looks after the aperture for us. Now the first thing we're going to do is lock in the ISO. So we're going to change the ISO from 200 to 100 by pressing the I button, selecting ISO from the options, press OK and change it to what we want. In this case, 100. Press OK and that is now done. And we press the shutter button to reset the screen. So now we don't need to worry about the ISO, we're going to change the shutter speed and the camera's going to look after the aperture for us. So you'll see as I turn this dial on the back of the camera and dial to the left, I'm able to slow the shutter speed down. This is two seconds, three, four, and the camera's changing the aperture for us. Six seconds, eight seconds. Now you may notice occasionally the F number on the back of the camera starts to flash. It's not actually happening on this occasion, but if it does, just adjust your shutter speed until the F number stops flashing, it's not a problem. Now for this picture, we're not gonna do a, a, an excessively long exposure. I don't wanna do 20 seconds. I'm gonna do something around six or maybe eight. I'm gonna go for six. So we're pretty much ready to go. We've chosen the six seconds. Camera's looking after the aperture. We've locked in the ISO. One more tip is to use the camera's self timer. This not only gives me a second or two to get into position, but it also helps eliminate any unnecessary camera shake. So now press the shutter button to focus. So this is gonna be our test shot. I just wanna make sure the exposure is okay. That's the shutter open. Of course, we've got to wait six seconds and then the shutter will close and we'll be able to see our picture. Okay, there's our picture reveal. It looks pretty good. Now we're going to repeat the process, and for this you do need to turn the self-timer on every time, which is a bit annoying unfortunately. Press OK, but this time I'm going to introduce my light source behind the subject. So once the shutter opens, I'm going to move my light source backwards and forwards. Shutter closes, and there's our first picture. I think that looks pretty neat. Let's have a look. Press play, zoom in. Eeyore's nice and sharp. You can see the light trails in the background and that looks pretty good. Now, if you wanna make your picture brighter or darker, you can use the exposure compensation button on the top of the camera. You just hold it down, dial to the right for a plus number. This will make your picture brighter. Dial to the left to make it a bit darker and I'm gonna go for a slightly darker image because I think our picture was just a tiny bit overexposed. I again have to turn on the timer. I know it's annoying, but it's worth it. Press OK. Focus, press the shutter, shutter button down. Again, I've got a few seconds to move into position. Move my light source around the back of the subject. And there's our next picture. And I think that is a slightly better exposure because it's darkened the background. That's our first image, that's our second image. You can see how different they are because no two pictures are gonna be the same when you do light painting. Now we're going to do a second picture, turning on the self timer again, only this time what we're going to do is wrap the light source around the subject. So press the button, self timer's on, got my light source in place, and I'm just moving the light source around the subject this time. And that looks absolutely awesome. Yours never looked so cool. Now a really cool hack is to take some colored marker pens and using the lids, blue tack them to the front of your iPhone. This will give you some cool color effects. So I'm using the Canon T7 or 1500D and the first thing I wanna do is put it into shutter priority mode which on the Canon is TV. Now the great thing about this mode is that we are gonna be able to control the shutter speed and the camera looks after the F number. So here is a shutter speed of one quarter second and the camera selected an F number of five, which is a large aperture. Now the next thing we're gonna do, and we did talk about this earlier in the video, is drop the ISO down to the lowest. So ISO, press the button, select ISO 100, press set, and that is now done. 
Now remember, there's three ways of controlling light. So we've now set our ISO. We're gonna be able to change the shutter speed, but the great thing about shutter priority is the camera will select the aperture for us. So if I dial to the left with the dial on the top of the camera, I can slow the shutter down. This is a one second exposure. Press the shutter button halfway down and the camera finds an aperture that works. Here, f7.1. If I slow the shutter down even further to four seconds, press the shutter button again, the camera again selects an F number or an aperture that works, and this time it's F14. Now, as I keep dialing to the left, you'll see as I adjust the shutter speed, the camera compensates with the aperture, and look out for the F number flashing. This may occasionally happen. There we go. And this means this time, the shutter speed I'm trying to use is a bit too excessive, and the camera cannot find an aperture that will work. So if this happens, just increase the shutter speed until the F number stops flashing. Now for this picture, I don't want to do a 15 second exposure. I want to do something around six seconds. So I've selected my six second exposure. The camera's comfortably found an F number or an aperture that will work. So I'm ready to go. But just one more tip to avoid camera shake and also to give me time to get into position, I'm going to turn on the two second self timer. Press set. Now all I've got to do is grab my light source. And for this, I'm using my uh, iPhone with the pink cap on the top. I press the shutter button halfway to focus, all the way to begin the countdown, and then behind my subject, I start moving my light source backwards and forwards. And there is our picture. Press playback, zoom in, and I think that looks pretty good for a first attempt. Now for even more control, you can use what is called exposure compensation, which is the plus minus button on the back of the camera. When you hold this and turn the dial, you'll see that the little marker here, which is your light meter, will move to the plus, or if you dial to the left, the minus side. Minus side if you want to make your picture a bit darker, plus side if you want to make your picture a bit brighter. So I'm going to go a little bit over to the minus side. I'm going to press the shutter button again, halfway down. The camera changes the aperture. Press it again. Shutter opens. And once again, I'm moving backwards and forwards with my light source for six seconds. And there's another image. And this one will be slightly darker than the previous. So this is how to do light painting on a Canon camera. So over the course of the afternoon, I had a lot of fun shooting with different subjects that I found around the house, trying out different colored lights and different techniques. And I was really pleased with the results. All of these images were shot with the Nikon D3500 or the Canon T7 1500D. But now I want to show you how I created this awesome ball of light in my garden. So I want to explain to you how I created that really cool light orb effect, uh, clearly taken at night. And for that reason, there's no video to show you, unfortunately, because it was just way too dark. But the technique is actually pretty easy. But let me start with the actual light itself. Now for the light, I've actually got here a bike light attached to a piece of ribbon because I couldn't find any string and half a ping pong ball. So I found a ping pong ball, uh, it was yellow, and the idea is that it gives me a yellow light. If the ping pong ball had been white, I would have basically colored it in using one of the colored markers. Um, and then all you've got to do is swing this around to create the effect. It actually works really well. Now I don't really have a big enough space to show you this properly, but to give you an idea how it works, and it's actually quite simple. Once you've got your torch on, all you do is you start swinging it, around like so, try and keep it steady, and then you start to turn. So basically I start to turn through 360 degrees, trying to keep the swing as steady as I possibly can. I'm gonna stop there, but you get the idea. Now for this, you need the shutter to be open for a long time. So I would say a minimum of 20 seconds. If you can do 30 seconds, even better. And if you go through um, a complete 360 degree turn, just, just keep going until the shutter closes. It's actually relatively easy to do, and it it's a great effect. It's definitely something that I'm going to go back to because I've already got in my mind some great locations where I want to try this out but obviously at the moment I can't venture outside the house so I really hope you 
So I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and you've picked up some cool tips. If you're keen to join the challenge, don't forget the hashtag is PGWeek2. Details are on the Photogenius website. I'll put a link below this video so you can check it out later. If you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget you can leave your comments, suggestions and questions down below. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.